Chairman, I had a couple of follow-up questions along um, with the ranking member in trying to figure out exactly what retailers may or may not be um, subject to the CFPA under your amendment. It is not infrequent, for example, at retail grocery stores that um, customers may receive some cash back when they pay their tab, either by check, debit card. Would this be a um, credit um, uh, transaction that would be covered by the CFPA? The gentleman would deal the answer is no, that wouldn't be covered. We can make it explicit if we had to. It's not covered under Taylor. It wouldn't be covered here. Thank you. And retailers that provide rebates, uh, particularly if the purchaser has to apply by mail, would they come within the ambit of the CFPA? The question again, this is credit cards? Uh, I'm sorry, what was the request? Retailers that provide rebates, would that be covered under this no, unless, again, I'm not fully expert on what TILA does. Uh, I don't think it would, though. Okay, well, I'm, yeah. just, I'm just curious yeah. about yeah. the expansion. Yeah. Not no, a, and it, no there was no intention to deal with, uh, with rebates. The, the next question I would have, Mr. Chairman, is on page three of your amendment, line six, uh, you create an exemption, but it doesn't apply to any credit transaction, quote, in which the credit provided exceeds the market value of the product or service provided. And I'm curious how the CFPA would determine exactly what is market value. I mean, I can go outside today and probably pay 20 or 30 different prices for a cheeseburger somewhere in the Washington metropolitan area. So if I deal to deal each other, yeah, certainly. It's a question that makes me think we may want to refine that a little. The purpose is we have seen a pattern where uh, some non-bank, non-retailers, there are entities whose major business model is to charge a lot of interest for people who are in distress. And one way we have found that people try to get around restrictions on that, some of the states have had payday lending restrictions, is to uh, offer a, an item for sale at a nominal amount and, and, and give credit far in advance of that. Um, and uh, we were trying to get at that. But I, I do agree it probably should have an adverb or two in there uh, so that it says significantly exceeds the market value. I mean, I, I understand what the gentleman is saying there, but there is apparently a pattern of abuse that people have seen, and uh, I would be glad to work to uh, include language that would make it clear that a few dollars wasn't it, but that we'd be talking about generally orders of magnitude greater. No, I, I, I'm reclaiming my time. I appreciate the chairman's willingness to, um, to work on that because I'm afraid that the language could lend itself to a lot of abuse by the CFPA. Uh, in essentially becoming a de facto price control uh, mechanism. I do want to revisit a subject of, of yesterday and show how this particular language might be applicable. Again, I'm, there was an uh, article in USA Today yesterday talking about frequent flyer miles. I will quote from the article. Weigh the benefits of rewards against the annual fee. The days when you could get a rewards card with no annual fee are numbered, Arnold says. If your rewards card charges a fee, you'll need to figure out whether the value of the rewards exceeds the fee. So again, I would just say, Mr. Chairman, if the language isn't cleaned up, there is a possibility, again, for the CFPA to use their authority to say, well, unfortunately, the value of the rewards do not exceed the fee. It is over the market value, thus de facto outlawing frequent flyer miles. The article went on to say, quote, that's not always easy to do, particularly with cards that give you airline miles, says Chris Fischera, associate editor for Consumer Reports. Reward miles often come with restrictions and expiration dates, making it difficult to figure out how much they're worth, he says. Again, if they're difficult to figure, it, to figure out how much they're worth, CFPA could designate uh, what I would consider to be a rather arbitrary figure, thus again lending credence to the theory if we don't clean up this language. Again, it may not be their intent. You assume that these will be very wise and benevolent public service servants. Maybe they will be, maybe they won't. 
But the authority, I believe, unless this language is cleaned up and other language is cleaned up, yes, the CFPA, as an example, would have the power uh, to outlaw frequent flyer miles, particularly if they thought that the uh, benefits exceeded the cost. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd be happy to yield to the chairman. I'm going to suggest two revisions, and we would be glad to work with the uh, Republicans before this would be to um, go to the floor. Um, or oh, we can even defer it now and put this language in. First of all, would be to put some modifiers in by how much you had to exceed the market value. And secondly, to change the or to an and. So you would have to find both that there was a significant excess and that it was for the purposes of subterfuge. If that's acceptable, we can get unanimous consent to agree on those modifications. There is no objection, so we will so modify it with uh, perhaps the word significantly exceeds and make the or into an and. Uh, is there any further debate on the uh, gentleman in Texas? If, uh, if the chairman would uh, let me ask a couple of questions.